Within this video, you are going to learn about implementing ChatGPT within a C-sharp application. Now, in order to implement ChatGPT, you have two possible options. Now, obviously, it's possible to write all that integration code yourself. However, on this channel, we like to be productive. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we're going to review the most popular NuGet extensions within the marketplace today and determine which is the best one for ChatGPT. So within the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn how to set up an OpenAI account and enable billing. And more importantly, which of the three packages that we're going to review should you use in your project? Now, this is going to be a banger, so stick around. Now, currently, in terms of popularity, there are three packages which are standing out from the crowd. These are OpenAI by OK Do It Yourself, downloaded over 60,000 times, Betelago OpenAI GT3, downloaded 55,000 times, and Forge OpenAI by GZO, downloaded over 45,000 times. So the question is, out of these three, which one is the best? Let's find out. Now, before we get into the meat of this video, it is worth pointing out that ChatGPT is not a free service. This means that although the packages I'm about to review are free, you're going to need to pay for some sort of consumption usage before you can actually get any benefit from them. Now, in order to get going with a paid service, basically we need to head over to platform.open.ai.com. Now, from here, we can basically create a new account and then we can go to the account settings. Now, when we're in the account settings, you're going to have to set your account as a billing account. So you can do that from this billing tab here. Now, from here, you can see that I can add in a payment method. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's got my credit card details in. But basically, you need to set one up. Now, a really important thing whenever you're using a paid for service like this is to make sure that you set up some sort of usage limit. Without doing this, if say a hacker got access to your API key, you could be rinsed for thousands and thousands of dollars. So click on that and this will take you to a new screen. And from here, you can see that I've got the ability to set up both a hard limit and a soft limit. So the hard limit is going to basically cut off the service when my usage threshold has been capped that month. And then the soft limit is gonna happen when I also hit the threshold. However, a notification is going to be sent this time. Now, after we set up all our billing details successfully, the next and final step we need to do within this website is to create an API key. So this API key is going to be the thing which will allow you to validate your application with the open API servers. So in order to create one of these API keys, go over to API keys, click on generate new secret key. From here, it's going to give you this API key. You can then copy and paste it and off you go. The first package that we're looking at today is OpenAI by OK Do It Yourself. Now, at the time of me recording this, this is by far the most popular downloaded NuGet package about ChatGPT in the marketplace. Downloaded over 65,000 times, this is 10,000 times more than its second place rival. Now, the OpenAI package includes code to integrate with the conversations, completions, embeddings, moderations, files, and the image API, also known as DAL-E, within OpenAI. Now, like me, if you have no idea what these terms mean, let's break each one down for you. So first we have completions. Completions will allow you to add some text as a prompt, and then the model will generate a text completion that attempts to match on whatever the context or pattern that you gave it. Next, we have conversations. Conversations takes things one step further, as this API allows you to send a series of messages as an input, and it uses the context of those messages in order to return an answer. Next, we have embeddings. Embeddings measure the relatedness of things. So let's say you wanted to create a search, recommendation algorithm, or maybe build some form of anomaly detection. You can basically use this endpoint to measure how related different search terms and different responses are together. Next, we have moderations. So the moderations endpoint can be used to make sure that your search query and answers comply with the OpenAI fair usage policy. Next, we have the file or fine tuning API. 
Now, finer tuning allows you to get more granularity in your search results to hopefully improve the quality of the responses. Now, one of the reasons why I think the OpenAI by OK Do It package has been downloaded so many times is because the documentation for it is pretty solid indeed. As I scroll through here, you can see very quickly that we've got code samples that we can copy and paste. We've got a nice chapter or summary at the top so we can easily scroll to the different endpoints. And then for each different endpoint, we have code that we can simply copy and paste so we can really easily see how we need to implement the API. Now to install this extension, just so you can see what it looks like in Visual Studio, we can install OpenAI by OK Do It Yourself. To get going with the OpenAI package, first we need to establish a connection back to the OpenAI servers. And we do this using this OpenAI API class, passing in the API key. Now, just so you know, this is written to an interface, so you could do dependency injection and inject this if you need to. Now, one of the things that I really like about this extension is it adheres to a fluent API design. Now, this means that when I'm creating my code, I can build up and bubble my commands using very easy to understand syntax. So on the screen, we've got an example. You can see here that I'm using or creating a conversation. So I've got the chat property. Then to start a conversation, I can just do create conversation. Now, in order to append new messages into my conversation, I can chain things up either using something like append system message. It's also possible for me to add commands like append a message, append user input, or even append a chat bot output. Now, for me personally, this declarative style is way easier to understand and comprehend when I'm reading code compared to the more imperative style. So for me personally, this fluent API design definitely gives it a big thumbs up in my opinion. Now that we've defined our conversation, the next part is to send the request to the server so we can get a response. Now we can do this using the get response from chatbot async. And the thing that I like about this is it returns a string or the response, which I can then use within my application without having to type it or worry about anything myself. Now, aside from conversations, we can do things like call a moderation using a moderation request. We've also got the ability to do embedding by passing in some strings. We can upload a file by passing in a file path. We can also create images by creating an image generation request, passing in a prompt, response formats, and all the other good stuff. Now, I'm hoping this code gives you a good flavor of actually how easy it is to implement this API. The syntax is very nice and you can get up and running with it very quickly indeed. The second package that we're going to review is the Better Largo OpenAI GPT-3 extension. Now, they should have probably thought about the name a little bit better because now it supports GTP4. So mm. now this is the second most downloaded package in the list and downloaded over 55,000 times. Now, before we have a look at how to implement this package in code, it's probably worth pointing out what endpoints it exposes. Now, the good news here is that it offers you a complete suite of the open AI endpoints. So by this, I mean completions, chats, we've got embeddings, we've got the moderations, we've got integrations with Azure, we've also got admin APIs. So we can edit models, set up streams, we can even work with the DALI API and images. So everything, the full gambit is covered with this package. Now let's start off with the documentation again. Now here I'd give Betlargo a solid thumbs up However, it probably comes in second place compared to the OpenAI package. Now, documentation is solid, don't get me wrong. We've got all the things like the installation commands. We've got all the code snippets you need to get up and running. However, when you scroll through the homepage, you can see there is a little bit less documentation here. Now, the good thing is that if you actually click on the features here, say click on files, you're actually gonna be jumped over to the GitHub. And from the project's GitHub repo, you can see there's actually additional documentation. So granted, this can be a bit of a pain because sometimes you need to jump between NuGet and GitHub. However, there is a good amount of documentation if you actually look for it. Again, just so you can see how to install this package in NuGet, head over to NuGet Explorer and it's the Betalago OpenAI GPT-3 by Tolga Kahan. One important thing to point out about the Betalago coding syntax or APIs is that it follows the underlying OpenAI API structure. 
This means that this package is very much more imperative in nature, which I personally dislike a little less. However, it's not necessarily the creator's fault because a lot of the time, building up message objects, passing them in arrays is basically how the underlining API works. So first off, we need to establish that connection with OpenAI. And in this case, we can use the OpenAI service. Now, from here, we pass in this OpenAI options. And then from here, we've got an API key and we can set it. Now, from here, we have a lot of other options like the API version, default engine ID, the organization, which is optional, validate API options, all that kind of good stuff. Again, this object is written to an interface, so we can use dependency injection. Then after we have an access or an established connection, we can then do something like an API.chat completion. Now, where this is different compared to the other OpenAI request is that you can see here we're doing a new chat completion create request. Then we have a message object. And then from our message object, you can see we can do a chat.message from system, from user, or we can do from assistant, whatever takes your fancy. So again, we can kind of build up this messaging. Then we can do things like define the model we're going to use, like a GPT-3, 5 Turbo, 0301, or we've got a load of other things. Now, I know that if you do try and use some of these models, you are going to get an exception. So you kind of need to know which one you use. But as you can see, there's a lot of options here. Another point worth considering is actually dealing with the response. Now, switch back to the OpenAI code example. And from here, you can see that we've got things like get completion, where we get returned an underlining string. We can get the get response from chat box where we get a string that we can work with. And then in some instances like this moderation, we get some objects and models that we need to work with. Now let us compare that code with the Betalago version. So you can see we've got our await and then we do our create completion. This is going to turn us a response model. Now in our response model, we have a successful property. And then this allows us to do a case when something goes right and then do an else if something goes wrong. Now, in the previous example, we just had a string. However, to get the same data from this version, we need to do a choices, first or default, check for null, message.content. I think we can all agree that this is way more of a faff, more code compared to just getting that underlining string. Now, in these instances, I prefer just to do a try catch around the whole fetch request. However, using the best Largo version, as you've seen, I'll probably have to do a try catch around the request. I also then have to do an if else to trap the response. So all in all, I have to write more code using this style of API. And I'm not going to go over all the remaining API endpoints for this plugin because they're all very similar. However, you get the feel that it's very imperative compared to the OpenAI declarative syntax. Now, all in all, I think this is a solid plugin. I don't want to knock it because the documentation is pretty good. The API works very well. So all in all, it is a good plugin. The final package that we're looking at today is called Forge OpenAI, created by JZO, not JZ. Now, this is the third most popular downloaded package with over 45,000 downloads. The Forge OpenAI plugin provides wrappers for all the standard stuff like completion, image API, fine tuning, files, moderations, and embedding. First, let us cover what functionality this package provides. So after installation, expect to get access to text completions conversations, the image API, the fine tuning API, files API, moderations, and embeddings. So the same as the other packages. Now, where this plugin has some unique functionality is that it also provides a transcription API and also a translation API. Now, these two API endpoints are, as a recording, not available within the other packages. Now, in terms of the documentation, I'll probably say Forge OpenAI comes in joint first place. As you can see, as I'm scrolling here, there is a bunch of stuff that documents all aspects of the API. So, thumbs up here. To install the package, you need to find the Forge OpenAI by Zoltan Zhohash. Now, after we've done that, in order to establish a connection, we need to register our API key with the Forge OpenAI service. So I'm going to show you how to do this using dependency injection this time, just to mix it up. You can do the same with the other services as well if you want to. In our service collection, we can do an add Forge OpenAI. There we have an options object. From there, we have the authentication info. And from here, we can pass in our API key. 
Now, other things we have in this option include things like the API version, the file and data UI, file to list API, image edit UI. We've got all sorts of good stuff in there. Now, after we've registered our service, we can then inject the iOpenAI service into a method or via our constructor. And then from here, we're going to have a number of different options. So we've again got the text completion service. We've also got things like embedding service, a file service, an image service, text completion, text edit, and transcription. In order to make a request to the OpenAI API, you basically need to build up this text completion request object. Now, one thing that definitely caught me out when I started using this API is that this prompt thing here, this property is a mandatory one. And if you fail to add in your search query to it, your code's going to blow up. Now, this isn't forced upon you, so it's very easy to make this mistake. Now, after we have our service, we can basically do an async request, passing in our basically request parameters, and then we can do a configure await. Now, just like the Betalago API syntax, after we make our request, we're going to get this HTTP operation result back. And from here, we're going to have an is success property. Now, again, we don't have access to the underlying string. And in order to get that, we need to do a result completions then we need to do a select in order to get our text so again this is a lot more convoluted than our first example okay so which one is the best now if i'm honest they're all solid extensions and i don't think you're going to regret using any one now personally i'll probably say that in third place is probably the best largo one now, the reason for this is it was slightly lacking in documentation compared to the others. Also, because the syntax is more imperative, I found I had to write a little bit more code when using it. Now, in second place, I'll probably say is Forge API. Now, for me, I think if I was doing something more complicated, I'll probably pick the Forge API because it has that transcription and the translation APIs, which is nice. It has great documentation. However, it doesn't have that fluent API syntax of OpenAI. So in first place, I think OpenAI is the winner. So I agree with the majority of the crowd. I think the fluent API nature of it is really good to use. The response is very simple to work with and the documentation is epic. Now there is a few limitations or less functionality when it comes to configuration and setup compared to the other options. However, if you need some basic chat GPT functionality, this is gonna give you everything you need and more. Now, this wraps up my new Git review. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Is there any of the packages you think I've missed out? Let me know in the comments below. Now, we are at that time of the video where if you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe. Otherwise, you'll miss out on my Sunday video. Also, if you have found value, click on like because it helps me grow this channel. Now, if you're interested in learning more about ChatGPT, then I've recorded a video which is called the best ChatGPT extension for Visual Studio 2022. So it's available on a link on the screen right now. So click on that if you want to learn more about ChatGPT. Otherwise, I hope you learn a lot from this video. And until next Sunday, happy coding.